Before we start the debate, what we thought would be a good idea to do is that if I gave uh, a brief overview of the topic and, and subject around advanced evasion techniques, um, because it can be quite a complex subject, uh, there can be quite a bit of confusion around the topic. So the idea is, before the debate actually starts and the conversations kick in around that area, I'm going to give you a short presentation to discuss the threats of AETs and also show you a live demonstration of how AETs can be used to bypass existing network security solutions. So, before I get into it really, what I wanted to do is highlight one of the big questions that Stonesoft received when we're talking about this subject. And that is, isn't, it just, isn't an AET just another form of advanced persistent threat? Aren't they one and the same thing? And the way Stonesoft sees this is they're completely different. Because an APT, an advanced persistent threat, is the motivation behind someone or, or a group of uh, criminals or, or an organization that wants to break into your security, your secure network and compromise data, remove personal information, whatever their goal might be. But it, the APT is the motivation behind that attack. So whether that be nation states, whether that be hacktivists for political reasons, or whether that be cyber criminals, obviously for financial gain, it's the motivation. And as part of that motivation, as part of that intent and the persistent threat to get into your secure environment, they're gonna use multiple methods. Now, those methods can take the form of many guises. So you've got the likes of social engineering. We've got the, the topic of phishing or spear phishing, where individuals within an organization are trying to, try to be lulled out of their network and click on uh, compromised links with the intention then that malicious software is downloaded onto that machine and then that device is compromised. We've got hackers going in and creating back doors into networks so they can maintain access once the attack has been taken place and they, they can maintain that level of access. Perhaps then try to great, uh, escalate their privilege escalation within the network once they're inside. And then obviously we've got the likes of exploits and zero day exploits that try to target our security systems to enable them to get into that network uh, and compromise the security and for whatever goal it is they want. So where AETs comes into this, is an advanced evasion technique is simply another method of gaining access into a network via, uh, by bypassing the security that's already in place. And the AET in itself is not a new exploit. It isn't uh, a new worm or a new Trojan or a bit of code that will infect a machine or, or cause a compromise. It's actually a delivery mechanism. It's a way to take an exploit compile it and deliver it through the, the network security device with the intention of doing that transparently so that that security solution is unaware that that exploit has just been delivered through that device. So there is a distinct difference between APTs and AETs. When we start to look at evasions in general, uh, evasions are not necessarily a, a new thing, a new topic. Um, Evasions have been around since the, the, the mid-90s, and as, as you know what it's like. As soon as someone puts a security measure in place, someone out there is going to try and bypass that security measure. And if you think about evasions, we need to go back to the fundamentals of, of TCP IP. When TCP IP was first developed, one of the last things in the scope for that was security. It was, a, it was designed so that disparate systems could communicate with each other. And over the time, vendors, network card manufacturers, application developers, all agreed on a certain set of uh, standards so that more systems could communicate using the same protocol. And that standard was RFC 791. Now just because that standard was chosen doesn't mean that that's the only way to encode and transmit data across a network. There could be any number of different ways to encode a packet and then transmit it across the network. It all depends on that general principle, or there's a general principle of robustness behind RFC 791 that says, if I'm a sending device, I have to be conservative in the way that I encode and transmit my data, but at the same time, if I'm a receiving device, I have to be liberal in how I interpret that data, reassemble it, and deliver it up my network stack into the, the chosen application. And it's that principle of robustness that advanced evasion techniques uh, would look to compromise and use different ways to encode the traffic, send it across the network, and then bypass network security solutions. So an advanced evasion technique 
is essentially any technique that can be used to attempt to bypass or compromise an existing network security solution. The thing that makes them advanced compared to what we class as traditional evasions is that they can be used across multiple levels of the network stack. They can be combined together and delivered simultaneously, whereas traditional evasions would typically be used against a single application or delivered across one level of the IP stack. And one of the biggest uh, threats within advanced evasion techniques is that the scope of the evasion can be changed during the process of the attack, which further goes to help hide the exploit that they're, they're attempting to deliver and bypass the network security uh, and compromise a, a vulnerable target host. So what I'm going to show you in a second is a, uh, a demonstration of an advanced evasion technique in, in action. Um, this diagram is there to illustrate the, the, the lab environment, the test environment that is set up. And what we have on the, the left-hand side there is a, is a device called Predator. Now, Predator is a, a, an in-house testing system developed by Stonesoft in order to test not only our own security solution for their, its effectiveness against advanced evasion techniques, but also we test other vendors' solutions for their effectiveness against advanced evasion techniques. So pretty much what we can do with this lab is choose any of the leading IPS, next generation firewall, IDS vendors in the market today, and we can try to deliver an exploit through those systems and try to compromise the vulnerable target host on the right hand side. So that's the, over, the idea of the lab. What I'm going to do now is show you an AET in action. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to connect to our R&D lab over in Finland. And this is the, the manual interface into the Predator system. Predator is an automated testing system that can attempt to deliver an exploit using billions of combinations of different advanced evasion techniques and attempt to bypass security solutions in order to deliver that exploit undetected so that it can be delivered to that vulnerable target host. So what I'm going to do, over on the left hand side over here, we have the, the vulnerability module that we're going to deliver. What I'm going to do in this lab is use the MSRPC vulnerability, better known as Comficker. The reason we use Comficker is because it is a, a relatively well-known and old uh, worm these days. So any device worth its salt should be able to successfully detect and block that worm going through the network. What I'm going to do first of all is deliver it through no IPS, just so you can see the intended result of the test. And here is our target system that we're going to deliver it against. And we're not going to use any evasions for now. We're just going to send it through clean with the hope that the device should be able to detect it. So let's execute against with no security just to show you what the intended result is. And the intended result here is to gain shell access with the attack succeeded so that we can open a command shell. So we've got full root administrator privileges of, of that target system. So I'll clear the log and we'll run the test again. This time, I'm going to use a Gartner Magic Quadrant security solution that's capable of doing deep inspection. Now, the vendor that I'm using, I am, I'm not picking on them because they are particularly bad at de to defending against evasion techniques, because most vendors that we've tested against are all as bad at protecting against advanced evasion techniques. So here's our list that we can choose from to test within our lab environment. I'm going to choose against this next generation firewall. No evasion still, and I'm going to execute the attack. Now, again, Conficker is a well-known uh, well worm. So this device should, and indeed does, stop the attack from going through without advanced evasion techniques. So we can see down here, no shell, the attack failed. If we take a look at the logs for that device now, I have a time filter set up there just to show us new entries. Uh, this machine is also in our labs in Finland, so it's two hours on from now, so the time frame will be two hours on from us. If I do a manual refresh of these logs, what we see there is the successful capture of that vulnerability. It's detected it as a server service vulnerability, and we can see that it's been blocked. So now what I'm going to do, bear in mind the time frame on there is 13, 57, and 25 seconds. We're going to run the attack again, but this time we're going to use advanced evasion techniques. So we'll stop the old attack, we'll clear the log, and now, I'm going to use an advanced evasion technique. So what we're going to do is fundamentally change the way the packet's encoded and then delivered across the network. So bear with me one second while I set some of these options.
Okay, that should be enough. Small change in this case. So we're going to execute the attack again. And you can see straight away, hopefully you can see if I bring the screen down for you, that with advanced evasion techniques, where that attack was previously blocked, we're now able to bypass that security solution and gain access to our target vulnerable system. As I say, this isn't because this, this vendor is particularly bad, all vendors are the same. If I go back to the logs in there and we do a manual refresh, I'll give it a, another manual refresh just to make sure that the logs aren't playing catch up. What we can see in there is the original log entry from the attack that we used without evasion techniques. So not only have we been able to bypass that security solution, but we've also been able to bypass it silently. We haven't left a trace in the logs. So from a security personnel's point of view, they're completely unaware that that attack has just taken place. Now, just in terms of giving you a, 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 a sort of brief potted history of where evasions came about, as I say, evasions are not a new topic. They've been around since the mid-90s. There were a few papers there detailing attacks against intrusion detection systems or, or ways to bypass them or possibly even compromise them. Later on in, in the mid-2000s, we saw papers that sort of showed the possibility to combine evasions, but no real work and no real effort in, in seeing them in the wild at that time. In 2007, Stonesoft Research started to do work particularly on evasion detection. And that's where the Predator tool came from. We developed that tool in-house in order to test not only ours, but I say other vendors as well. When we first went public with advanced evasion techniques in, in the summer of 2010, we had 23 advanced evasion techniques. Now that doesn't sound like a huge number, but the fact that advanced evasion techniques can be stacked or combined it means we've actually got two to the power 23. So that's a huge combination straight away. We've since continued the research, and as of where we stand today, we're around about two to the power 300 possible combinations of advanced evasion techniques that can be used to bypass network security solutions. So why is it possible? This is a, a fundamental networking issue, and it's one issue that most vendors have either ignored or decided not to look at because of the difficulty in, in actually enabling the protection to do this. Because one way you can't protect against this is to create signatures. A signature-based system will not stop an advanced evasion technique attack because surely there are just too many possible combinations. So it would require a massive amount of effort in order to create all of the signatures to cover every possible combination. There's also been issues around speeds and, and false positives. One of the issues of putting IPS or, or deep inspection on a network is to uh, obviously I'd enable that level of security. But a lot of people don't want the security if it means that the throughput or the, or the processing speed drops to, the, to a level such that the network isn't able to run. So vendors start to compromise the security in order to boost the performance. And basically, attackers move with the times. Most technologies today are using the same methods to detect attacks that they were using 10, 15 years ago. Hackers aren't doing that. They're moving on. They're developing new tools and new threats. So the security solution has to evolve with it. So essentially, what does this mean to you? Well, as you've just seen from that demonstration there, we took a Gartner Magic Quadrant security solution, and we can do that with many others, and we can bypass it silently. One of the other tra uh, traits we've seen with some of the vendors is that they indeed say that they've blocked the attack, and they report the fact that the attack has failed, but actually the predator system has gained command that shell access. So it's actually giving you a false negative in the fact that it's reporting that it's blocked, but actually it's gone through. So I'll let you make your mind up which is worse there, whether not to report anything or to report uh, a false negative. But it just means that your data now needs to be greater, have, have greater protection around it. So hopefully that's given you a brief overview of what AETs are. It's shown you the capabilities um, and we're going to hand over to the panel now for a, a discussion. But if you want to see more advanced evasion techniques against any particular vendor of your choice, come and visit us at stand D21, and uh, we'll be happy to show you some more and uh, give you more information if required. Thanks very much.